This is Witchbase News for Friday the 11th of February 2022. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Last weeks treasure hunt ends with a shocking imperial revelation Mal for the win and the Buckyball Racing Club team up for another run at Perico. The final phase of the Colonia Bridge community goal gets underway and the Thargoids attack the bubble. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. The first story this week contains major plot spoilers for the current rolling narrative in the game so that if you'd like to avoid those then there's a timestamp in the video description that will take you to the second story this week. Still with us? Ok here we go. In lieu of the community goal appearing with last weeks regular Thursday server cycle a new treasure hunt and decoding challenge appeared in the game. These treasure hunts and paper chases are somewhat unique to Elite Dangerous and have over the last 18 months become a tried and trusted method for the community team to deliver the next phase of narrative to the player base. This latest installment tasked commanders with following a trail of beacons associated with the terrorist organisation known as the NMLA and where we've seen such things before they generally lead to a hint of something more or a it was here but you missed it be sure to tune in next time style of moment. In the case of last weeks trail however there was a definite and solid revelation moment in the story. The trail eventually led, albeit in textual form, to the rescue of the Imperial Emperor herself Arissa Lavigny Duval who it seems had been kidnapped by private military contractors a year ago and unceremoniously stuffed into a cryostasis pod. The kidnap effort apparently being supported in part at least by a rebellious faction within the Imperials who have also been propping up the NMLA. More information is expected soon from the ACT operatives that rescued her Imperial Majestic Imperialness. There clearly having been some bigger issues inside the Imperial machine. At least for now it does seem that the NMLA has had its unofficial slash official purse strings locked off at the source very much putting them presumably on the back foot as the ACT continues to chase them down. The Buckyball Racing Club in partnership with the Twitch streamer Mal for the Win are running their popular full throttle at Perico challenge event this coming week starting on the 12th of February and running through to the 20th of February. The Perico challenge requires pilots to land at 6 stations in the Perico system in a specific order and keep repeating that cycle of landings for 20 minutes reaching as many as they can in the allotted time. If you've never visited the Perico system then it is worth a look. There is just one star and no planets in the system and the stations themselves are so close together that their super cruise disengage zones can often overlap. Keep an eye on Mal for the Winds Twitch channel which you'll find linked below. It's likely he'll be doing a run of the challenge himself. And whilst we're on the subject of Mal for the Win, we also happen to know that season 4 of the Flight Assist podcast he co-hosts with Psykit kicks off on Monday. You'll also find links to Psykit on Twitch and the Flight Assist podcast below. The fourth and final phases of the Brewer Corporation's Colonia Bridge project is to be the subject of community goals for the next 4 weeks. Kicking off with the Thargs Day server refresh this week which will see Universal Carter Graphics and Vista Genomics services added to the 6 new starports that now span the void between humanity's two major hubs. The CG this week is offering significant financial rewards for participation but it's promised that future goals in this final series will offer what the press release on Galnet is calling quote a variety of additional rewards unquote. So if credits are not a motivator for you then it's still worth keeping an eye on the future goals to see what else pops up. 
The PR further elaborates that to commemorate the not insignificant community input to the bridge the top 10 commanders from all previous and future CGs in the series will be immortalised in commemorative beacons to be installed when the bridge is finished. To participate in the goals this week travel to either the Alcor system in the bubble or the Colonia system in Colonia. The galaxy awoke on Tharg's day morning to learn that the Thargoid menace had once again launched a sudden and unexpected attack. This time however the spacefaring dahlias of destruction had not picked on some distant unknown outpost of humanity tucked away in a distant half forgotten nebula but had instead decided to knock on Sol's front door and begin attacking systems on the edge of the bubble itself. As of this recording stations are already ablaze in the Dan and the Norni systems and the HIP12314 system is showing as being in a state of AX incursion although no stations there are currently on fire. The player data tracking website Inara is also reporting at least one incident of Thargoid scouts appearing in the Jataya system and here at the Burr Pit we have also had relayed to us first hand accounts of a Thargoid hyperdiction happening inside the bubble whilst the affected commander was en route to the systems in incursion. The Anti Xeno Initiative player group are taking the threat to HIP12314 seriously and have placed the systems AX conflict zones as their number one priority on the Thargoid Watch website that they maintain. And when the news of fresh attacks by the interstellar honeysuckle horrors broke the players of the post disaster evacuation service also sprung into action deploying multiple support carriers to the affected systems to help support players aiding in the evacuation and recovery efforts. If the AX and rescue efforts are successful in the coming weeks then Operation Ida and its flotilla of resource laden fleet carriers will doubtless also be deployed to get the affected stations back online but before then the Thargoids must be swept away and the civilians recovered from the targeted starports. If you're willing and able to assist with any of these efforts and want to join the communities I've mentioned who are coordinating their efforts then you'll find links in the video description below. Whilst the Thargoid attacks close to Sol are not completely without precedence they are extremely unusual. We know the Azimuth Saga storyline currently running in the game is closely linked to the Thargoids and in particular to the entity or individual calling themselves Salvation. We also know from Frontier that the Azimuth Saga is coming to a conclusion and that we can expect consequences as a result of our choices throughout the sagas 18 month runtime. Salvation, whomever or whatever they are has previously promised that they will one day quote launch a significant strike against the Thargoids and ultimately expel the alien threat from our galaxy unquote. Their previous actions have also proven that they can draw Thargoids to somewhere of their choosing in order to then save us from the threat that they themselves appear to be creating. Given its timing is this fresh attack on the resources of the bubble part of the Azimuth final chapter and the beginning of Salvation's promised endgame? Quite possibly. Whatever happens the next moves from the shadowy puppet master and wannabe saviour will be undoubtedly crucial. Are you joining the rescue effort sweeping out the Thargoids, racing between the starports of Perico, or ploughing the spaceways of the community goal? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.